If someone handed you a dark, heavy, and seemingly ugly rock like this one and told you it could be worth tens of thousands of dollars, would you believe it? I know it sounds like a scam, but it's actually true, and there's a reason for it. This rock isn't just ordinary. In fact, it's of extraterrestrial origin, which means it traveled millions of miles through space before landing right here on our planet. And despite its unimpressive appearance, if you've ever come across a rock like this in your backyard, you might have been holding a real fragment of the universe, one that carries valuable information from the formation of the solar system to the very origins of life itself information that would cost billions of dollars to obtain through space missions. And here's the most surprising part. Meteorites aren't as rare as most people think. Every single day, small space rocks pass through our atmosphere and fall in different places around the world. Many of them are tiny, smaller than a golf ball, but even so, they can be worth a fortune. But when it comes to meteorites, there are two things you need to know. First, how to identify one. And second, that almost everyone ignores these stones when they see them in nature. That's because for every real meteorite, there are hundreds of ordinary rocks that look just like it. In other words, you might kick a meteorite out of your path or even throw it away without realizing you were holding a true treasure. So to make sure that doesn't happen to you, in this video, you're going to learn what a meteorite is, how it forms, what the most common types are, and most importantly, how to recognize one using simple tests, just in case there's one hiding right in your backyard. So stick with me until the end, because after learning all this, you might realize that the dark, forgotten rock sitting in your garage could actually be worth more than your car. Although it might seem extremely rare, the fall of meteors on Earth is much more common than you think. Every single day, dozens of tons of extraterrestrial material reach our planet. That's right. It's estimated that more than 50 tons of cosmic dust and space fragments enter Earth's atmosphere every day. Most of these celestial bodies completely disintegrate before reaching the ground, but a small portion survives the journey and lands on the surface in the form of a meteorite. These fragments can be as small as a grain of rice, but sometimes they reach the size of a football. And the most surprising thing is this. Many of them fall in places where no one is watching. Deep in forests, deserts, oceans, or even in urban areas. But they go unnoticed simply because they look like just another rock out of place. The truth is that seeing a meteor streak across the night sky is only the tip of the iceberg. That bright light, what we call a shooting star, is the moment the object enters the atmosphere and starts heating up due to friction with the air. Depending on its size, it might completely disintegrate or survive the fall and become a meteorite that reaches the ground. And here's where it gets really interesting. Out of all the meteorites that fall, only a small portion are ever recovered. That's because most people don't know what to look for. They have no idea that the strange rock on the lawn or the dark object found in the backyard could be something that came from space. But not all meteorites are the same. In fact, scientists classify these space fragments into three main categories, and understanding the differences between them will help you a lot when it comes to making a proper identification. The first type are stony meteorites, also known as chondrites. These are the most common, making up about 90% of all meteorites found they look similar to some volcanic rocks found on Earth, but contain microscopic metallic spheres called chondrules, which were formed in the earliest stages of the solar system. These meteorites usually have a dark coloration and may show a slight magnetic attraction. The second type are metallic meteorites made almost entirely of iron and nickel. They are extremely dense, heavy, and have a shiny metallic appearance when cut open. They are rarer but highly valued both by collectors and researchers, because they are more resistant and contain important clues about the core of ancient asteroids. Finally, we have the stony iron meteorites, also known as mixed meteorites. As the name suggests, they combine characteristics of both previous types, showing rocky structures alongside visible metallic inclusions. 
This combination makes them visually distinct and even more fascinating for those who are learning how to recognize meteorites in the field. These three main groups form the foundation for identifying what kind of meteorite you might have found. Now that you know meteorites fall much more frequently than most people think, and you're familiar with the main types that can be found, it's time to understand how to identify them in practice. And the first step might seem obvious, but it's essential. Observe the location where the rock was found. That's because a meteorite is a rock of completely different origin compared to local stones. In other words, it often stands out from its surroundings. So if you're in an area where the rocks are usually light-colored and porous, and suddenly you find a dark, dense, smooth rock that looks like melted metal, that contrast could be your first red flag. Many people who have found meteorites describe the same feeling. This rock didn't look like it belonged there. That kind of visual instinct can be more valuable than you think. In some cases, meteorites can leave behind a small crater or dent in the ground, especially if they're a bit larger. These marks are easier to notice in sandy terrain, grassy areas, or moist soil. In urban settings like sidewalks or paved yards, the impact might not leave a visible mark, but the object can still be picked up shortly after it falls. After checking the find site, the next test is simple but highly effective, the magnet test. Most meteorites contain iron and nickel, elements that respond to magnetic fields. That's why using a magnet, especially a neodymium magnet, which is much stronger, is one of the most helpful tools for anyone starting out. The process is easy. Tie the magnet to a piece of string and bring it close to the suspicious rock without touching it. If the rock is attracted to the magnet, that already indicates it contains metallic materials in its composition. Now, it's important to understand what this result actually means. Depending on the strength of the magnetic attraction, you can estimate what type of meteorite you might be dealing with. If the attraction is weak, it could be a stony meteorite, which contains only small amounts of metal. If the attraction is moderate, it may be a stony iron meteorite with both metallic and rocky parts. If the attraction is strong, there's a very good chance you're looking at a metallic meteorite with a high concentration of iron and nickel. This kind of magnetic response is so typical of meteorites that many collectors and experienced hunters use the magnet test as their first filter. It quickly helps rule out volcanic, sedimentary, and other common terrestrial rocks that don't react to magnets at all. But pay attention, not every magnetic rock is a meteorite and not every meteorite will have strong magnetic attraction. Some terrestrial rocks like magnetite and hematite also attract magnets. That's why the magnet test is a great indicator, but it shouldn't be your only method of identification. And there's one more interesting detail. A few extremely rare meteorites don't show any magnetic response at all. They're made mostly of non-metallic minerals and hardly react to magnetic fields. These are very rare exceptions but they do exist. Still, if your rock shows no attraction to the magnet, the chances of it being a meteorite drop significantly. Another extremely useful test for identifying meteorites is the so-called density test. Despite the technical sounding name, the process is simple and can be done using materials you already have at home, such as a digital scale and a container of water. The goal here is to understand whether the rock you found has the typical density of a meteorite which in general is higher than that of an ordinary rock. What makes this test so effective is the fact that meteorites usually contain metals like iron and nickel, which are much denser than the minerals commonly found in terrestrial rocks. This means that when comparing two stones of the same size, the meteorite will feel significantly heavier. To do the test, you'll need a digital scale. A kitchen scale works just fine as long as it's accurate. A cup or container filled with water and a thin string or piece of thread. Here's how the procedure works. First, weigh the rock normally and write down the value. This will be the dry weight. Then place the cup of water on the scale and reset it to zero so that the weight of the container is not counted. Next, tie the rock to the string and holding it by the end, gently lower it into the water without letting it touch the bottom of the cup. The scale will show a new value which corresponds to the buoyant force 
In other words, how much the water pushes the rock upward. This is the weight in water. Now comes the easy part. Divide the dry weight by the weight in water. The result is the relative density of the rock. Common rocks from Earth's crust usually have a density below 2.8 grams per cubic centimeter. Meteorites, especially metallic ones, can easily exceed 3.0 or even 3.5 grams per cubic centimeter. For example, if your rock weighs 300 grams outside the water and 100 grams while submerged, the density would be 3. That's already a good sign that you might be dealing with something special. Densities above 3 are considered suspicious and deserve attention. The higher the density, the more likely the rock contains metal, and therefore the greater the chance it could be a meteorite. This test is so effective that many experts consider it one of the best home methods for initial identification, right alongside the magnet test. After all, a common rock that doesn't attract a magnet and has low density can be safely ruled out, while a heavy, dense one is worth investigating further. In addition, when you combine the density result with the magnetic behavior and the visual observation of the rock, your chances of getting it right increase significantly. And that's exactly what we're going to do next. Understand the visual clues that might be present on the surface of a meteorite and that most people simply overlook. After checking the fine location, testing magnetic attraction, and calculating the rock's density, it's time to use the oldest and at the same time, one of the most reliable methods, the visual test. That's because meteorites have very specific external features, and once you know what to look for, these signs become easier to spot. The first and most important one is called the fusion crust. The fusion crust is a thin, dark layer that covers the surface of a meteorite, almost like it was burned on the outside. This layer forms when the rock enters Earth's atmosphere at extremely high speeds. The friction with the air heats the object to temperatures that can exceed 1,600 degrees Celsius, causing the surface to melt and then cool down rapidly, forming this scorched coating, which is often shiny or has a glassy appearance. In some cases, this crust has a texture similar to burnt bread crust or even resembles a cracked eggshell. You might notice tiny surface fractures or hairline cracks that form due to the rapid cooling of the material after atmospheric entry. Another common visual sign is the presence of regomaglips, small indentations that resemble finger impressions, as if the rock had been squeezed while still soft. These grooves are caused by the action of hot gases and surface melting during atmospheric entry. It's a striking feature, especially in metallic meteorites, and it's nearly impossible to replicate in terrestrial rocks. But be aware, not every meteorite will retain a visible fusion crust. That's because many of them fell to Earth hundreds or even thousands of years ago. Over time, exposure to sun, rain, wind, and humidity can erode this protective layer. As a result, the stone ends up looking much more like a regular rock, which makes identification even more challenging. In addition, some Earth rocks can easily fool an untrained observer. A good example is stones covered in desert varnish a dark coating formed by the long-term action of minerals and microorganisms, which can simulate a fusion crust. However, unlike a true fusion crust, this layer doesn't show any signs of thermal melting and usually looks more matte and uneven. Another important detail to look for is the absence of holes or bubbles. Many terrestrial rocks, especially those of volcanic origin, have small cavities called vesicles, formed by the release of gases during lava solidification. These bubbles are a clear sign of a rock from Earth. Meteorites, on the other hand, have a much denser and more uniform structure, with no hollow spaces on the surface. In fact, one of the most common mistakes is confusing meteorites with industrial slag, like iron smelting waste. These slags can be black, heavy, and even magnetic, but they often have bubbles, a metallic surface shine, and a more irregular shape. Plus, they are frequently found near urban or industrial areas. That's why, whenever you come across a strange-looking rock, take a close look. Pay attention to the texture, the shine, the presence of a fusion crust or cracks, and whether there are melted markings or fingerprint-like impressions. These visual clues, combined with the previous tests, 
will give you a much more solid foundation to know whether you've found something special or just another ordinary rock. Even after observing the rock, testing it with a magnet, and checking its density, there may still be a lingering question. Could it really be a meteorite? That's where one of the most decisive tests comes in, the window test. This method involves sanding a small area on the surface of the rock to expose its interior. The idea is to open a window into the rock and reveal characteristics that are normally hidden under the fusion crust or the dirt that builds up over time. The procedure is simple and can be done with wet sandpaper, like the kind used for metal or wood, or even regular wall sandpaper. Just pick a spot on the rock and rub it firmly until the outer layer is removed. If you want to make the process easier, you can wet the sandpaper or sprinkle a little water on the rock to reduce friction. Now comes the interesting part. If the rock is truly a meteorite, depending on the type, you'll notice some very distinctive features. In metallic meteorites, the inside revealed after sanding is usually silvery, shiny, and has a visible metallic texture. In some cases, geometric patterns may appear. These are known as widmann staten lines, structures shaped like triangles or interlaced stripes that only form in space during the extremely slow cooling of metals like iron and nickel. These patterns do not exist in terrestrial rocks and are considered one of the most reliable signs that you're holding an authentic meteorite. But what if your rock isn't a meteorite and doesn't pass any of the tests? What should you do then? Should you just throw those stones away without a second thought? Well, many people have already found valuable stones, but because they didn't know how to properly identify what they had in their hands, they ended up selling something that could have been worth hundreds of dollars for just a few cents. And unfortunately, there are buyers out there who take advantage of beginners who lack knowledge. That's exactly why, if you want to avoid situations like this, you should check out the ebook Gemology Journey for Beginners. It's a complete guide designed especially for people who are just getting started with simple and straightforward instructions on how to identify the type of mineral you've found using homemade tests, like hardness tests, density tests, visual analysis, and light refraction. The goal isn't to teach you how to negotiate or estimate the price of a stone, it's to make sure you don't get tricked into selling a diamond for the price of a topaz, which is much cheaper. When you know what you have in your hands, it's much harder to fall for scams or accept unfair offers. On top of that, the ebook includes an exclusive table for collectors with the main minerals, their visual characteristics, density, hardness, and rarity level. Perfect for anyone who wants to better organize their discoveries and build a reliable, well-documented collection. Right now, the standard price of the ebook is $29.90, but the first 10 buyers will get a 50% discount, paying just $14.95 for lifetime access. Or, if you're lucky, even less than $10. And the best part? You still get a full 7-day satisfaction guarantee, where you can ask for your money back with no explanation required. So if you want to take advantage of this opportunity, just click the link in the description. But if you're still taking your first steps or feel like it's not the right time yet, don't worry. You can subscribe to our channel for free and check out other videos like this one filled with practical tips on how to identify gemstones, meteorites, and much more. In fact, in the next video that's already showing up on your screen, you'll learn how to identify other valuable minerals that might be hiding right under your nose. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Good luck, Gem Hunter.